In the planarity algorithm, the first part is quite simple and straightforward. Step 5 is a little more complicated, and I will put a copy of this up during the video. In the video, I will complete two examples of working through the planarity algorithm. Here is a graph that we wish to find out whether it is planar or not. The first stage is to find a Hamiltonian cycle. That is, a series of edges that connect to each other, starting and finishing in the same place and going through every vertex. The red lines indicate a possible Hamiltonian cycle. There are others available, but this is the one that I found. So first of all, we draw a polygon with all of those edges in there. Then we're going to add the other edges from our original graph, and I would advise doing this in alphabetical order to make sure that every single one is included. So from A, we have an edge going to D. Then from B, we have one going to G. There are no additional ones from C. D has the additional edge going from D to H. And then from E, we have two more. We then take that modified version of the graph and work with that. First of all then, we are going to make a list of all edges inside the polygon in any order. I've chosen to do it alphabetically to make sure I've included all of them. Then we choose an unlabeled edge in our list and label it with an I. At the moment, all edges are unlabeled, but I'm going to label EG. I've put it in blue to make it obvious. Since we now have to look at edges that are crossing it, it's probably helpful if we bring up step five of the algorithm. So we look at any unlabeled edges that cross the edges that we have just labeled, that is, any edges that are crossing EG. We have two in this case. Those two edges do not cross each other, so we're going to give them the opposite label to EG. That is, we're going to give them both an O. After that, we look at that last stage. If all edges are now labeled, the graph is planar. Well, it's not, so we go back to the start of step five again. We're going to look at any unlabeled edges that cross the edges that have just been labeled. So that is, AD and DH are the ones that have just been labeled, and we're going to look at any lines that cross those. BG and EH are the only unlabeled ones. We don't need to consider EG because that's already been labeled. We look at those two that are in red. We notice from the second part of step five, if any of them cross each other, the graph is non-planar. The two red lines are crossing each other, therefore this is a non-planar graph. For our second example, we have a slightly more complicated graph with a lot more going on in it. We follow the same process to start with, first of all finding a Hamiltonian cycle. This is the one that I have found, and we draw our polygon accordingly. We then put the edges inside, again remembering to be careful how we do it. So from A, we have a line to C and a line to D. From B, there are no additional lines. From C, we have edges C to D, C to E, and C to G. There are no additional edges from D that haven't already been drawn in. From E, we have one to H and one to G. And we have one from F to G. And we're done. So we take our modified graph and we work with that. First of all, we're identifying all of the edges that are inside. There are eight in this case, so a little bit more work to do than in the previous example. And then we choose one to label. If I choose AC, I label it with an I, but we notice actually that there are no edges crossing it. So we don't need to do any more with that one. We go back and we find another edge. I've chosen AD. Now I've put it on a separate line so that I can keep track of which ones have just been labeled. We look at all of the edges that cross that line. There are three in this case. We notice that they do not cross each other, so we give them the opposite label to the one that we have just labelled. So it was I, we're going to label those three with an O. Then we consider any lines that cross the ones that we have most recently labelled, those three that were O's. We look at those and the lines that cross those are CD, CG and FG. 
we can quickly see that they are not crossing each other, and we give those I being opposite to the O that was given for C, E, E, G, and E, H. And actually we find that it's planar because now we have the point where all edges are labelled, the graph must be planar. All that remains now is to draw that planar graph. So first of all, we draw the polygon of the edges that we originally had. Then we're going to draw the edges that go inside, that is, all of the edges that are labelled with an I. So we have AC, AD, CD, CG, and FG. The three that are labelled with an O must go on the outside. So we have CE, EG, and EH. All of the edges are now on the graph, and we can clearly see that it is planar. There are no edges that are crossing each other, and our job is done. So with the planarity algorithm, as I said at the start, the early part of the algorithm is very straightforward, but that tricky fifth step you do have to be careful with. Make sure that you follow it through, following each stage and doing precisely what it says, considering all edges and whether or not they cross. Good luck!